to a tutorial on using the website searchonmath.com. Uh, I will be using uh, this search engine to find equations in a variety of different uh, sources. So I'm just going to give you a quick example of how one would use this search engine. So I'm going to type in a LaTeX formula, and since I care about an equation, I'm going to wrap it in a special notation, these slash parentheses, to make it a LaTeX equation rather than just a regular string. So if I have some something like x plus 2 and I want to find that formula um, somewhere on the web, I can do a search here, and then it's going to return a bunch of results. Now, unfortunately, some of these results are grayed out. Um, they're not visible. Um, but it does show a few of the right matches here. So x plus 2 shows up on this math Stack Exchange website. So that's that's, that's cool. Um, I, I don't think it's the particularly strongest value. I mean, they can find strings in, in a lot of websites. So let's go back and, and figure out where is it drawing this from. Well, there's actually a, a, a number of websites that it's the, have been scraped for their math content in LaTeX. So these are sort of the, the usual suspects like Stack Exchange and Wikipedia, Planet Math, the NIST database of equations, right? So, so that's that's kind of normal uh, places you'd want to look for, for math equations on the web. Again, unfortunately, some of the results are grayed out here. So I'll talk a little bit about their pricing plan. So this is a subscription-based service. Um, so if we were to subscribe, uh, the, the free, free results, um, they sort of get you what we're looking at. And then the uh, search for actually seeing all the results would get would cost you about $4.50 here, but then it's marked up to 99 cents. And it turns out um, this is actually 99 cents during the first month and then 450 after that. So uh, that's, that's quite an investment, uh, depending, I guess, on how much uh, searching you do of math equations. All right, so let's go to the part that I'm actually pretty excited about. Uh, let's look for that same x plus 2 equation, but we're going to change where we're searching. We're going to change it to archive. Um, so that's that's actually pretty neat. Uh, you can search all the areas, and you can specify a, a date range for that, but let's just look in the archive for a specific formula like x plus 2. That's, that's actually a, a neat capability. Again, unfortunately, the matches are mostly uh, not visible, but here you can see like there's a link to the archive page, um, and it highlights sort of where that string shows up in, in, the, in the data. So that's pretty neat. Um, I appreciate that. So now I actually want to, that's a pretty generic formula that would show up in a lot of places. It showed up in 205 archive uh, papers. So that's sort of uh, reasonable, I guess you could think of it. It's a pretty small formula or easy. I did a search for uh, another equation. So here it's the trace of n sub m and then multiplied by rho. So that's a pretty unique formula. It showed up um, in archive about 10,000 times, but there are no exact matches. Um, what that tells me is that I happen to know it shows up in this one archive paper uh, released in October of 2010, uh, sorry, 2021 uh, as equation 9. So that means they're their database isn't quite up to date, so October uh, was roughly about eight months ago. So their their database isn't actually current in, in scraping the archive, so that's unfortunate, but not unexpected, I would say. So the fact that they, again, they, there is a specific formula, and they that's not actually showing up in the results. Um, there's no exact matches, um, so that's, that's sort of expected. So let's do another. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to close this paper. Let's do another search for something that's pretty old. So now here I'm looking for a formula of pi minus theta sub i. That happens to show up in a paper from 1991 in this equation here, sort of not numbered in the paper. But if we look for that formula, there's actually an exact match. And there's uh, 150 results. So that's promising, but again, it's grayed out, so I can't actually see uh, where that shows up. Uh, here you see they also match pi minus theta rather than pi minus theta sub i uh, in math stack exchange. Uh, it's just, oh, here's. I'm going to copy this formula and I'm going to take it over to the 
switch it over to archive and see if we can find it. Again, this is the paper from 1991. Um, there are those 585 results. Um, and again, we're not able to see the exact match of them, unfortunately. It is counting equations that aren't actually pi minus theta sub i as exact matches, it looks like. All right, so I think that's that's mostly what I wanted to, to show off about uh, search on math. They have sort of, the, I guess, the entry sort of marker of if you can type a formula in LaTeX, automatically it sort of like fills it in. Uh, let's see, int of, say, f of x, dx. So it automatically renders it, so that's kind of neat. Uh, and they have this formula keyboard that I think they've come up with independently, where you can actually enter in uh, new things. So let's, let's start over here. Uh, so there's some, they can type in things that are pretty straightforward for you if you don't already know uh, LaTeX. So that, that makes the, the input a lot easier because I think most people searching might not be completely familiar with all the different LaTeX syntax if you're not a, some, a specific expert in that. Uh, they do have a YouTube website, so there's one video on it that's uh, 1 minute and 25 seconds long. Um, they also offer an API subscription service, like if you've signed up to do queries on their website and actually see the results, which is going to cost you either $0.99 cents for the first month or 4 dollars after that, um, you also get 1,500 queries, which sounds reasonable, but then also they have a limit that each query is limited to 20 results. Um, so that means you could actually burn through 1,500 queries in a month pretty quickly if you do a lot of queries uh, via the API. Um, so this is their API, sort of the commands they have for pretty straightforward stuff to use, I think, here. Um, that's, that's on their, their documentation page. This is They're showing where all this stuff is, is being gathered from. And then they have some documentation on how to use the API. So that's, that's pretty nice. I like the, the web interface there. And again, the cost of this is by subscription, so 99 cents or 458 after that. And this is after I've created an account, this is the, the account view. So overall, I think I, I really like the concept of search on math. Uh, obviously, it's not a semantically enriched query. It's just searching for LaTeX strings in a, in a variety of sources. But I'd say overall, pretty impressive effort. Looks like they've been at it for at least seven years based on when the YouTube account was created.